Okay, Pops, big news coming out of the state of California. 2035, put an equal sign next to that. No internal combustion engine vehicles in California. That's the equation that they're proposing, Dad. Pretty interesting stuff. What's your take on this? Well, it's not quite the... Uh, what what they're proposing. What they're proposing is by 2035 um, that you won't be able to buy a brand new internal combustion engine car. Um, there will still be millions of internal combustion engine cars on the roads in California in 2035 because those cars are basically going to be grandfathered in. But as of 2035, the rule will be that you won't be able to purchase a brand new one. So manufacturers will not be able to offer brand new ICE vehicles in California. Um, this is the strongest push possible towards uh, all electric or or alternative fuel type vehicles that produce zero emissions uh, that we've seen in this country. And let's face it, California is the biggest um, user, purchaser of electric vehicles in this country as we know it. And damn it, it's the fifth largest economy in the world. So um, this pretty much can have a huge impact on what goes on in the rest of the country. Yeah, a lot of interesting pieces here. First and foremost, 17 other states typically follow California's auto emissions standards. So the fact that they are by 2035 moving to 100% of new car sales being, uh, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Uh, zero emission. Thank you. Yes. Zero emission. That's a pretty big and material uh, decision because it's going to potentially impact the 17 other states who typically follow in their footsteps. And you're right, Dad, about 15% of new vehicles sold in the state of California are zero emissions vehicles. And essentially, we now have firm timelines and targets for what those percentages need to move into. For example, starting at 35% in 2026, 35% of new vehicles sold in California in 2026 need to be zero emissions vehicles, 68% by 2030, and like we said a moment ago, 100% by 2030. 35. This comes on the heels, Dad, of EV tax credits, which we've been covering extensively over on the YAA Electric channel. Those EV tax credits, unfortunately, actually make it more difficult to purchase an electric vehicle at a better price point. The average transaction price for a new electric vehicle, Edmunds has it at about $62,000. The latest Cox Automotive data had it north of $66,000. Dad, there's all sorts of reasons why Doing any of this by 2035 feels, I don't know, just a little rushed, a little a little too fast, a little too soon. And, and to be clear, I am not a zero emissions hater. I think this is great and everything. I just wish there were more price affordable options out there, and they're not right now. You know, anytime you set these arbitrary guidelines as to uh, what the percentage of sales of zero emission vehicles have to be by 2026, well, you, th there might not be... There might not be 35% of the vehicles offered for sale in California that are zero emission vehicles because of manufacturing issues all around the world. So it's great to say this is when it has to happen, but there has to be enough flexibility in there to realize that, you know, because of extenuating circumstances, it very well might not be able to happen by that time frame. And we have seen in the past when governments implement these arbitrary timelines that manufacturers have a way of, oh gosh, working, working out the statistics so that it looks like they're within the guidelines that have been set by the governments when they really are not. So, uh, you, you know, we have, to, we have to take some of this with a grain of salt. There has to be a certain amount of flexibility built into it. You know, it, it's great. As I ranted the other day, it, it's great to have a dream, okay? This just might not be a legitimate dream to have um, in the time frame that they're looking at. I want to pull up here, Dad. This is an article that came by way of Bloomberg. We know there are power shortages in China, the country that has the greatest EV adoption, Dad. This line reads, Tesla turned off or restricted services at more than a dozen supercharging stations in the two cities, uh, the two cities that are most uh, impacted by the power shortages, leaving just two still in operation and only during the night as of August 17th. Dad, what happens when we push so so far in the, hey, everything needs to be electric, but we don't have the infrastructure there to actually support it. 
California has the most charging infrastructure of any state, so that that makes sense and everything. But it's it seems like a little too fast, too furious. Great movie series, but it really does that. I mean, all jokes aside, too fast, too too soon. It, it it's just they're 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 great concepts, I suppose. But you know, how do you get it all in place? I mean, you're you're looking at that situation in China. Um, you know, you'll have the same situations in 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 the United States. The electric grid is not built or ready to handle all the uh, all the extra electricity that will be needed to charge these vehicles whether it be in California where they've been known to have rolling blackouts um or whether it be in the rest of the country it's a great idea that doesn't have the infrastructure behind it to actually bring it about you know if you're going to tell american people the american people that you, you have to have an electric car or a zero emissions car and more than likely that would be an electric car um oh and by yep. the way you won't be able to charge it anywhere because well it's just too much too too much um, draw on the grid at the moment so you know, hey, whether your battery goes dead or not, maybe maybe you can only drive based on your license plate. If you have a odd day license plate, you can drive on the on days. If your license plate ends in an even number, you can drive, you know, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You know, it's just, it's nonsense. As, as in so many things that governments do, uh, they don't always look at all the unintended consequences. And if we truly aren't prepared and we don't seem to be uh, grid wise, infrastructure wise, um, you know, then, then they need to take a closer look at what some of the unintended consequences might be. And they need to ask some questions before they move forward. Not to mention also those average transaction prices, Dad. I mean, just yes. like truly the, the average cost of a new vehicle, I think last month was like around $48,000. The average transaction price for a new electric vehicle was sixty six thousand yeah. dollars do the math i mean who the hell can afford that not everyone that's for damn sure no. and the options that are on the road why are we building electric trucks why are we not building i don't know more uh, usable vehicle well trucks are very usable and everything but like we don't need a nine thousand pound uh, gmc hummer you know riding around we need i don't know give me like a a, a, a hybrid just honestly start with a hybrid powertrain palisade that'd be a good place or a telluride something like that anyway we could go on forever about this it is incredibly interesting to see what the state of california is doing. And Pop said it's going to have ramifications for other states and for the industry at large. That's for sure. I'm curious what our community thinks. And again, on the YAA Electric channel, I'm sure we'll be digging into this as well. But I'm curious, Dad, if other people think they're, they're maybe we're moving a little too fast. We'll find out.